Hello everybody and welcome to Books with Ike. My name is Isaac and today I'm going to be doing my really rather late Christmas book haul. This is going to be the first in my, you know, end of 2020 videos, which, you know, was a while ago. <laughs> I haven't had time to film so I'm just having to do this now, but I'm hopefully going to film all of them very soon and then hopefully put them up the day after I film them, we'll see. So I have 20 books to talk about, so without further ado, I'm just going to get on into them. So I'm going to start by talking about the books I got from people who aren't my family. And not necessarily all of these are Christmas gifts, uh, the first two certainly aren't. And these were from Fab, from the Fantasy Inn Discord server, so a massive thank you to them. And the first of those is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. And so they already had two hardback copies of this, I think, and then they received the paperback and they asked if anyone in the server wanted it, and so I snapped it up immediately. I know this is a YA urban fantasy based on Arthurian myth. It's about a girl whose mum dies, and she she's at this university, but at like a, a junior's thing, a residential program for high schoolers, and she encounters a magical creature, and someone tries to erase her memory of it, but fails and so it turns out that she is also magic in some way, and it's possible that her mother's death wasn't just a random accident. Obviously this is extremely hyped at the moment, and it sounds great, and I can't wait to get into it. And the other one they sent me was Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee. Apparently they do an annual clean-out, and this is one of the books they were getting rid of, and so I saw it, and I wanted it, so I asked for it, and they said yes. This is the Fairy Loot edition, I do believe, and it's got this extremely cool art inside the dust jacket. I don't know if you can see that, I'll do this. <laughs> and it's got a cool spider design on the actual cover, so that's cool. I remember the synopsis of this being very confusing, but it's like about a a girl whose best friend dies, and then she accidentally brings her back to life, and she's like the first necromancer in centuries or something, and so she has to be sent in into the forest to meet with the Spider King. All of these seem like very disparate elements, so I'm not sure how they come together, but I am intrigued to find out. And so the next two were gifts from the Shelf Space Discord server Secret Santa, and I am so sorry, but I, I did not write down who sent these to me, and the channel where they told me who they were has been deleted, so I have no record of who sent them. So if it was you, please do let me know in the comments or DM me on Discord, since we're in the same server, you'll know. And the first of those is The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. And this is like a... I think of it in the same vein as like The Starless Sea and The Binding, in that it's a probably a vaguely literary fantasy. I don't exactly remember what it's about, though. So this is set in 1883, and this is about a man called Faneuil Steepleton, who returns home and finds a mysterious pocket watch on his bed. And so when the pocket watch saves him from an explosion, he goes out to look for the creator of the pocket watch, Kata Mori. And it's gay as well, I know that much, and it sounds really interesting and weird and cool, and I can't wait to read it. And the other book they got me was Blackfish City by Sam J. Miller. And this is a... I guess it's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi or sci-fantasy, maybe, I'm not sure. And it's set in this city in the Arctic, and it starts when this woman comes to the city riding on a killer whale, and she has come to the city to seek revenge. And yeah, that synopsis is really vague, but I don't really want to know anything more about it. I expect it to be a very weird story, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Oh, and I love the cover. And then the last one I have that was got for me, not by my family, was sent to me by my friend John uh, over at Walker Wright 7. He's also a booktuber, and you should definitely check him out. And we each bought each other a book from our Amazon wish lists for Christmas, obviously. And so he sent me Running With Lions by Julian Winters. 
and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. This is a YA contemporary, I believe it's an MM romance, or at least has MM romance elements, and it's about a football team, that's soccer, to Americans, <laughs> and it's about a guy reconnecting with his childhood best friend, who now hates him. Like, everyone loves this book, so I think it may be a five-star prediction for me. Moving into stuff from my family, my brother got me Saga Volume 8 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. And long-time viewers of my channel will know that I've only read up to Volume 5. So yeah, I can't read this at all yet. I asked him for Volume 6, but he couldn't find it, so, or Volume 7, so he just got me this one. And I neglected to tell him that I was going to stop after Volume 6 until the hiatus was over because I'd heard that Volume 9, which is where it's up to at the moment, ends on a cliffhanger, and that Volume 6 kind of wrapped up the story arc from the first five volumes. I'm not sure how true that is. If I'm wrong, please tell me, because I don't want to buy Volume 6, and then it's a cliffhanger at the end of that as well. So this is a space opera about two members of warring races called Marco and Alana, who fall in love and have a kid, and they just want to live peacefully outside the war, but everyone else wants them dead. It's a really great series. And the first book my parents got me was Unhallowed by Jordan L. Hawke, and I have no idea what this is about, because it's a spin-off to the Wyborn and Griffin series, and so rather than wait, I just bought myself the first Whiteborn and Griffin book, Widdishins. These are adult paranormal MM romances, or historical fantasies, I should say. I don't know what the exact plot is. So this is about a guy called uh, Percival Wyborn, who is a scholar, who's approached by a man called Griffin, who is an ex-detective, to translate an ancient book, which is the only clue to solving the murder of some guy, and there's a cult trying to rule the world involved somehow. So yeah, it sounds very interesting, it's very highly regarded in the MM Romance community, so I can't wait to read it. Next I got Gold Wings Rising by Alex London, and this is the third and final book in the Skybound trilogy, which, depending on how this ends, may end up being one of my favourite series. This is about a pair of twins called Bryson and Kylie, who have to go into the mountains and capture a ghost eagle. Bryson goes because he wants to trade the eagle for the life of his lover, and Kylie goes because she wants to protect Bryson. And so I enjoyed the first book, I was absolutely blown away by the second book, and this book I'm reading at the moment, I've got about 150 pages left, and I think how I'm going to feel about it will very much depend on the ending. But this is a really great story about, you know, abuse and trauma and cycles of abuse and generational trauma and, you know, racism and loads of stuff. It's really well written as well. Like, it's set in a world where everything revolves around birds of prey, and the way that Alex London just, like, works bird metaphors into the narrative is just so well done. So yeah, I'm enjoying this at the moment, but how it all comes together will have to depend on the ending, and I can't wait to see what happens. And Bryson is gay, and Kylie is an aromantic asexual, so if you're looking for asexual rep, definitely pick this series up because it's great. The next book I have is The Cloud Roads by Martha Wells, and this is the first book in the Books of Raxora, Books of the Raxora, I should say, which is a high fantasy set in a world with no humans, and it's about these shape-shifting people called the Raxura, and the main character is called Moon, and he has been hiding out among non-shapeshifter tribes, because he's an orphan and doesn't really remember where he came from, and then he meets another one of his kind, and things progress from there, I suppose. And the Raxura, I do believe, are a binormative species, so that's cool. The next book I have is The Fire's Stone by Tanya Huff. This is a classic queer fantasy story from the 90s, and that's about as classic as it gets for queer stuff. This is a standalone fantasy, it's got three perspectives, and it's set in this land called Ishia, 
which is loomed over by an active volcano, which is held in check by the Stone of Ischia. And then someone steals the stone, and that means the volcano could erupt. This sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to read it. I'm steadily accumulating these more classic, well-known, older gay fantasies, so yeah. I also have The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi, and this is a very popular booktube darling at the moment, so I'm sure you already know what this is about. Certainly you probably know more than I do. I know this is a YA historical fantasy, I know it's a heist story, I know it deals with mythology, and I know that it has a, an ensemble cast, and that's about it, and I don't really want to know any more. It has a beautiful cover, and it has this extremely cool design on the actual cover, and I know that it has queer characters, and I know that there's a bisexual love triangle. I'm very excited to read it. Next I have Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This is a fantasy set in a city in the middle of a desert, I believe, and the only source of water is this monster, which controls the people of the city somehow, I don't know how. And this follows a tiny chaos lesbian who is engaged to marry her gay best friend uh, for political gain. This is an arrangement they've made themselves, they're not being forced into it. And then she kills the water creature, whose name I cannot remember. And as a consequence, she is exiled from the city and has to go in search of more water before everyone in, in the city dies of thirst. Which should only take about three days, so it'll be a short, <laughs> short thing. It sounds like a really cool and unique fantasy, and again, I love the cover, and I can't wait to read this. Next I have Rufus and Sid by Robin Lippincott and Julia Watts. And so this is a historical fiction, I think, about these two outcasts in this small Georgian town. One of them, Rufus, is gay and synesthetic, and the other one, Sid, is a punk, I think. It says she has spiky hair and they form an unlikely friendship with these two older people, one of whom is a bohemian, and the other is a gay man who has brain damage due to a hate crime from his youth. It might not be historical fiction, actually, it might be contemporary. I don't know, uh, but it sounds really good, and I can't wait to read it. I also got The Magpie Lord by K.J. Charles. This is another MM historical fantasy romance. This is about a lord who has to hire a mage to work for him because he's under a curse. And I don't really know more than that, and I don't really want to know more than that. I love the cover. K.J. Charles is, of course, another extremely big name in the M.M. romance genre, so I'm very excited to read her stuff. Or their stuff? I'm not sure. And then another M.M. romance I've got is Wolf Song by T.J. Clune. God, this is heavy. Um, T.J. Klune is obviously another big name in the M.M. romance genre, and recently gained mainstream appeal with The House in the Cerulean Sea and The Extraordinaries. This is one of his earlier M.M. romances. This is a werewolf story. This is about a boy called Ox, who meets this other boy as a kid, and then stuff happens and the boy leaves town, and then he comes back to the town as an adult, and romance ensues. And I really don't know more than that, the synopsis is very vague. And obviously the other guy is also a werewolf, or at least I assume so. <laughs> if it's not about werewolves, I'm going to be very shocked. <laughs> Next I got The Five Stages of Andrew Brawley by Sean David Hutchinson. Sean David Hutchinson is one of my favourite authors, so I want to read all of his work and he writes weird, contemporary-ish stories with a speculative twist on them, and this is about a boy called Andrew Brawley, obviously, who is in a hospital burn ward, and he is convinced that one of the other patients is being stalked by the spectre of death, and he starts drawing comics about it, I think, and some of the pages in this book are his comics. So, yeah. Don't know if that was a spoiler or not. Don't pay close attention, please. 
So yeah, I've loved both of the Sean David Hutchinson books I've read so far, and I expect to love this one as well. Next I have another MM fantasy romance, and that is A Fairy of Bones and Gold by Hayley Turner. This is the first book in the Soulbound series, I'm not sure how many books there are. And this is an urban fantasy, and there are gods, and immortals, and demons, and werewolves, and it's about this guy called Patrick who has to protect a werewolf from mercenaries, and obviously they fall in love. And that's as much as I know, but I know it's also a very popular one in the MM romance genre, so I'm excited to get around to reading it. Next I have The Thousand Names by Django Wexler. This is the first book in the Shadow Campaign series, and I don't really know much about this, I don't remember much about this, I know that it's queer, I know that it's a flintlock fantasy, it's a chunky one, I wasn't expecting it to be this long, and I believe the main character is a woman who disguises herself as a man to get into the army? But I'm not totally sure about that, I could be wrong. The synopsis is really vague and doesn't really tell me anything, but I know this is a very highly regarded series. I know a few people who really love this series, so I'm excited to get into it. And finally, I have Prisoner by Megan Durr, and this is the first book in the Kriya series, or the Captured Heart series, as it was rebranded later. And Megan Durr is obviously another big name MM fantasy romance author, and I really want to get into a lot of her stuff, it all sounds great. So this is about a nameless man who slaughters hundreds of soldiers in this army, and then the general takes him prisoner. And that doesn't sound like the setup for a romance, but apparently it is. So I'm intrigued to see where that goes. So yeah, that was every book I got for Christmas, plus a couple of others. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear what you thought about them, so please leave that in the comments below. And also tell me what are some books that you got for Christmas, or whatever holiday that you celebrate. This is so heavy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter, or add me as a friend on Goodreads if you feel like it. Links to both of those in the description. And I will hopefully have another video up soon. It should be my worst and most disappointing reads of 2020. But until then, thank you for watching. I have been Isaac, and this has been Books with Ike. Goodbye.